RTA is committed to providing a safe workplace, and each of us understands that safety is part of every job in our organization. Around here, we like to say, safety begins with me, and what that really means is taking ownership of our actions and work area, as well as looking out for our coworkers. One resource all employees have is regular toolbox sessions within their work area. Each month, a topic is emphasized and supervisors and employees share information in an informal meeting that encourages an open dialogue around safe work environment issues. A brake reline is one of the many complex repairs we do on a regular basis. There are many opportunities to injure ourselves or others, so it's important to be familiar with the procedures outlined in the work order system, as well as to review the job hazard analysis prior to starting the job. Hey, good morning, Dan. Good morning. I got something for you. I want to give you a hat, a pump hat, actually, with the new safety logo. Oh, well, thank you very much, Jay. Sure. I've got a scheduled break reline for you today, and I want to review the new job hazard analysis with, with you. Okay. There's a lot of potential hazards I want to discuss with you. I want to make sure you, you got your personal protective equipment on. Okay. I want you to take time and clean the lift area. There's a chance for a slip, fall, or trip. Okay. I also, definitely have your safety glasses because there's a lot of springs, clips, and debris that can get in your eyes. And also use the proper lifting technique when lifting the coach up on the axles. The Job Hazard Analysis, or JHA, is a tool we have to help ensure safety. A JHA identifies potential hazards or risks associated with an individual repair or procedure, and it seeks to mitigate or eliminate the hazards from that job. It includes things like recommended steps and guidelines, outlines control measures, proper personnel protective equipment or PPE standards, potential hazard triggers, and other cautions. A proper JHA is not just a piece of paper, it represents an ongoing process that continually evolves as working conditions change. A JHA doesn't make a job safe, but it does help everyone understand the hazards of a job and the controls set in place to mitigate or eliminate them. Thank you very much for sharing the JHA with me. I really appreciate that. No problem, Dan. We should be familiar with the JHAs related to our job responsibilities and supervisors should review the elements of the appropriate JHA with each employee when assigning a task. Today, I'm going to do a break reline on one of our coaches. It's a big job with a lot of detailed work and plenty of hazards. The JHA helps me get ready by reminding me of all those hazards and how to protect myself and my coworkers as I complete the task. After donning the appropriate PPE, the first step of a brake reline is inspecting and relocating the coach to the assigned lift. Inspecting the lift and work area helps ensure the lift is working properly and the work area is free of hazards. Grease or oil or coolant may be left on the shop floor from a previous job. Getting this up with a mop now can keep me from taking a fall later. I also checked out the lift to make sure everything's secure. Now I'm gonna go get the bus and set the lift. The coach is prepared for the repair by turning off the batteries, connecting to the shop airline, and performing an inspection to identify any additional repair work needed or safety-related defects. After raising the coach one foot and checking the lift set, the coach is raised up to the full height required and re-inspected. Before I started inspecting the coach, I made sure I had the proper PPE for this job. Jay and I covered this when we discussed the JHA, so it was easy. I have my safety glasses, my safety shoes, and my bump cap. As you can see, there are plenty of chances for me to injure myself, 
even just doing the inspection. So the appropriate PPE, even at this stage, is important. I've already put in the order for the parts. Now it's time to remove the wheels. Removal of the wheels is the first major task to perform. This involves setting brake adjustments at all brake positions, removing slack adjusters, camshaft mounting bolts, and fixed point hardware. The coach will need lowered to the appropriate height to perform some of these tasks. Removing the rear axle is a place where the right tool for the job is critical. When doing this, it's important to reach for your brass hammer to avoid any steel-on-steel -steel contact. Using your steel hammer can cause chipping of parts, sparks flying, and debris. So use the right tool for the job. Many of the parts being removed may be able to be cleaned and reused. Place these in the basket for cleaning and clean all gasket surfaces. Lowering the coach to floor level allows for the removal of the wheel and hub assemblies. This is done using the wheel dolly. Inner wheel seals and bearings are removed and the bearings are set aside for cleaning. Cutting with a torch may be required at this point. Pulling the wheel and hub assembly is a big task. Remember to use proper lifting techniques and ask for assistance if needed. When you're removing the inner seals and bearings, use hand tools, not an air wrench. This minimizes the brake dust in the air, which contains fiberglass. After the wheels have been removed, you can begin teardown of the brakes from all brake positions. First, the brake shoes and return springs are removed. This starts with removing the outer snap ring and brake shoe return spring then cutting the tag wire on the anchor pin locking bolts. Using a hammer, tap the anchor pin locking bolts to free them up, then remove them. Now it's time to drive out the anchor pins. This process involves loosening the pins with a hammer, warming them with a torch, then finishing with the anchor pin press. At this point, it is crucial to coordinate with other team members to ensure the proper use of a torch to warm the anchor pins. Working together and communicating are a very important part of our safety begins with me policy, and especially so when working with potentially hazardous equipment such as a torch. I see we have your PPE on, that's great. As you know, there's a lot of potential hazards while operating a torch. First, I wanna make sure you have your work area clean, Make sure there's no flammables or trip hazards. Secondly, make sure there's a fire extinguisher close by in your work area. And make sure Dan stands fire watch while you're performing his task. And check the regulators to make sure they're equipped with spark arresters. No problem, Jay. I'll make sure I open up the valve all the way on the oxygen tank and a quarter turn on the acetylene tank. Perfect. Keep an eye on the acetylene regulator also. Make sure it doesn't exceed 15 PSI. And when you're done, make sure you turn the tanks off in fact, the regulator's down to zero PSI. Got it covered. I'll go ahead and get with Dan. We'll get started. Great. Cleaning parts is another thing that requires attention to detail and the appropriate PPE. You want to avoid any splashing of cleaning solvents into your clothes, skin, or into your eyes. So take your time and wear the correct PPE. Now that the parts are cleaned and inspected and the new parts are available, the brakes are reassembled. Following SOP, Assemble the brakes with special attention to those areas that require specialized tools and specific settings. It's also important that you torque the anchor pin bolts to spec before installing the tag wire. When the brakes have been reinstalled, they need to be tested for proper operation. I'm working with another technician who will apply and release the brakes while I observe the brakes operating. I'm watching to see that the rollers in the brake shoes don't slide on the camshaft, making sure the slack adjuster returns to the release position and listening for air leaks when the brakes are applied. Mario? Yes. On? 
on, off, off. As you're doing this, it is key to communicate with the other technician and to make sure your hands are clear when the brakes are being applied. It is very easy to get your hands up in here and get it pinched. Installing the wheel and hub assemblies is the next task. Make sure the wheel bearing cones and hub assembly are clean, free of debris, and in usable condition. While raising and lowering the coach, make sure the lift area is clear and you and your coworkers are at a safe distance. Lower the coach to ground level, then install the wheel hub assembly onto the spindle and axle. Then lift the coach to a good working height and install the wheel bearing and adjusting nut. Adjusting the wheel bearings is generally done in two steps. First, adjusting the wheel bearing end play, then performing a check of the adjustment. Then, readjusting as needed and checking again. The procedure is outlined in RP 618, the Maintenance Council's recommended practice on wheel bearing adjustment, the NABI Service Manual, and the Greater Cleveland RTA Training Department Wheel Bearing Maintenance Procedure. Refer to these for specifics before performing the adjustment. Now that we have the wheel and hub assembly on, the next stage is to adjust the wheel bearings. At this point, we're going to use a torque wrench. We're going to rotate the wheel and hub assembly and at the same time, torque it to 100 foot-pounds. Okay, now once you've achieved that, you want to back the nut off a half a turn. Now, to maintain the proper adjustment, we have to torque that nut now to 20 foot-pounds. Now, after adjusting this to 20 foot-pounds, now we're going to back it off two flats or one-third turn. Going to install the lock ring and the safety lock. Going to install the outer jam nut. Okay, at this point, you want to check the shop manual for the manufacturer's specifications for the proper torque on the outer nut. I already have mine set to that. Now that we've adjusted the wheel bearings, it's time to check for end play. On this application, the specifications are 1,000 to 10 thousandths of an inch. I have my dial indicator already set up. Let's check it. Four thousandths of an inch. This one's ready to go. Now it's time to install the axles and bend down the safety tabs. Finishing this procedure starts with installing a new gasket and hub cap on the steer hubs and axle seal wipers onto the drive axle spindles. Then install new axle gaskets and seal assembly onto wheel hub studs. On the drive axle, install cones and nuts. Torque the nuts evenly to 130 foot-pounds. Then raise the coach and test the brakes. Brake throw should be as short as possible without the brake lining touching the drum. Work with another technician to check for proper operation. Make sure the brakes return to the complete released position and the wheel spins freely. At this point, it's time to torque down the wheel lug nuts. This is a pretty basic thing we do all the time, but it's very important for overall safety. So, making sure you use a star pattern tightening sequence, torque the wheel lug nuts to 450 foot-pounds plus or minus 50 foot-pounds. Completing a brake reline requires properly burnishing the brakes and performing a road test. These last steps are critical for me because it gives me the confidence that the reline has been performed correctly and the coach is ready to be returned to service. This video has been a high level look at how to perform a brake reline with special emphasis on pointing out those areas where safety is concerned. Always refer to the SOP and to your supervisor for more in-depth information on performing this procedure 
And remember, safety begins with you. See ya.